In this tutorial series, I'm going to cover how to use Redshift with Maya. And in this video, I'm going to start with a basic overview, a crash course on using the Redshift render. If you don't know, a Redshift render is a GPU based render, which is very fast. And I've been using it for the last few months and I really like it. I like the results and how fast it is. And in this ongoing tutorial series, we're going to cover everything you need to know to get started and to begin rendering with it. So in this video, let's get started with the overview and how to begin rendering your first few frames. So after you've installed Redshift and then you launch Maya, you should see a new drop down menu on the Redshift. And you should also have a tab, Redshift tab right here. If you do not see either one of these, then you may need to enable in the plugins to make sure it's loaded and auto loaded. So if you go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and then go to Plugin Manager, make sure that right here, Redshift for Maya, it is loaded and auto-loaded. And if you don't see this, you may need to uh, search for it. So just type in Redshift and it should pop up. And then once you've done this, you should have a tab up here and a drop-down menu, and you should be ready to go. Now, I do not use the drop down menu. I really don't remember the last time I actually used for anything using Redshift. And everything I need is right here in the custom tool shelf that comes pre-installed with Redshift. And everything I need is right here. So the first few icons, these first four, are your render view, your render current frame, your IPR, which stands for interactive photorealistic rendering. This is kind of like a real time where you can adjust properties, materials, lights, and it will update at the same time in real time. And then you have your render settings. Now these icons right here are going to be very similar to if you rendered things in Maya before. You'll also have access to these same icons right here. And you can actually use the Maya version and it will work with Redshift. But Redshift comes with its own set of menus. The render view looks a little bit different. So let's go ahead and just left click on the render view. And let me bring it into the view. And this is what the render view looks like. So I like using the render shift render view more than I do the render view from Maya, but you could use the Maya native one and just render with Redshift. So if I go ahead and just show you what it looks like, you can actually use this window as well. So if you're used to this, you may stick with this, but I really like uh, what comes with Redshift. The only thing here is if you do end up using the render view from Maya, you just have to make sure that you switch your render to the Redshift and then you render with it. So if I open up the render view again, this is your primary window to see what you are rendering. And you have a few icons here. It's a lot cleaner than the Maya render view, uh, view version. So uh, this is what I use. Now, the second one is it's going to render your current frame. So if you just left click on the second icon, it will render whatever I'm looking at. Now, I don't have anything in the scene. So it'll be completely empty. The IPR is the interactive photorealistic render. Basically it'll update any changes you make inside the scene. And I'll have to show you when I actually have some lights or maybe some materials. It will also update your camera. And then the last icon, the fourth icon is your render settings. If you open that up, you have a bunch of settings here. You can change to improve quality. And I mean, there's a ton of settings here and a lot of these we're not going to cover. But a few here are very useful and I'll go through them. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. Now we can't see anything inside because we don't have any lights. We don't have any objects inside the scene. So let's go ahead and insert something to work with. So I'm going to zoom in and let's create a cube. I'm going to make it larger. Place it on the top of the grid. And also I'm going to create a flat plane. Uh, usually when you render things, you have to have some kind of a ground plane so you can have cast shadows. So I don't want this cube to be floating in empty black space. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a plane and make that larger. And I'm just going to change the subdivision axis to one. So it's just easier on eyes. And let's go ahead and uh, do our first render. So I'm going to come over back to the Redshift tab and click on render view, bring this up. And I usually don't click the second icon. I usually open up the render view. And in order to 
render your current frame, all you need to do is click on this very left icon right here, render. It's going to render from your perspective point of view and show you what you are looking at. Uh, because we don't have any lights, it's going to use the Maya default lights. So it's going to give you this flat shading. So in order for us to start rendering and seeing some good results or any results, we need to insert and use some redshift lights. So I'm not going to cover lighting in this video. That's going to be in another video and I'm going to split those up in a few sections. But because we're going to cover the interface and the, the render view options, we need something. We don't want to just look at this and go through the options. So let's go ahead and I'm going to insert a light. Any light will do just so we can have something to look at. Again, I'll cover some of these a little later, but to insert a redshift light, you have one, two, three, these five icons right here. These are your redshift lights. I recommend that you do not use any Maya lights and use only redshift lights. So as you know, you can go to create lights and you can use these right here, but these are Maya based lights. And when you use an outside render like redshift, it comes with its own redshift lights and you'll find them right here. So right here, the first one, I'm going to right click. Anytime you see a little triangle on the corner, that usually means there's a additional items underneath this menu. So to get access to this, just simply right click, it'll give you a drop down menu, and then you can select very similar lights if you used Maya before. You have your four basic area lights, point lights, spotlight, and direction light. So to kind of have something here, let's go ahead and I'm going to use an area light. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and the resize this. Don't worry about how, how I'm doing this. I'll cover this a little later. But I want to just have something inside the scene. And anytime you update, since we're not using IPR, which is interactive version of rendering, which happens everything in real time. Uh, anytime you add a light or anything like that, or any, anytime you change the material, you'll just have to do another frame render. So just I'm going to left click on this again and just take a look what's happening. So here we have a basic scene with a, a simple light. And then anytime you update anything, you just click and render that single frame. Now, because this light is very intense, uh, the intensity is too high because I scaled it. I'm just going to move it back just so it's not as intense and creates those uh, spotlights. So that very harsh light of an effect. So here we are. We did a very basic frame render using one of the lights and we didn't really change any properties but we just wanted to get something going so when you have your redshift render view open the way you navigate inside here in order to zoom in and zoom out uh, you can hold down alt and then right click hold and drag in order to zoom in and zoom out on an image and if you hold down alt and middle mouse click and drag this will pan the image around and if you want to frame it hit f and this will frame your view. So all this does is just simply navigates, uh, zooms you in and out and moves the image. And one thing you'll notice that I want to point out is we are rendering from a perspective point of view. If we had cameras in here, we could render from a specific camera and I'll show you how to do that a little later. But just to point out, this is where you'll get access to any additional cameras you insert inside the scene so you can render from them. So anytime you make changes, you just basically have to do what's known as bucket rendering. You just left click and this will render your current frame once. Now, the power of using the Redshift render is using IPR. And it's gonna be the second icon right here. As soon as you enable it, this will begin to interactively update your scene when you make any changes. So if I move the camera, this will move along with it and update. If I take the light and I change any properties for it, so in this case, I'm only going to scale it because the way area light works is if you scale, it increases or decreases the intensity. But just as a side note, you can adjust many properties for every light you insert by going into the attribute editor with the light selected. And you have a bunch of properties here that we will go over in, in another video. But right now, I'm, I'm simply going to just scale it just to show you. So as long as I have IPR enabled, you can see that I'm scaling the light, it's reducing the intensity. If I move it, it's interactively updating the scene. So this is real power of IPR and Redshift Render. You can see how quickly it updates. You don't really have to wait much and you get to see the results. 
Now, every time you move around and it updates, you will see a small little progressive rendering, a uh, little thing that's kind of counting up. And you also see it right here on the bottom left. Basically, it's constantly updating to go to the final best quality version. So this is why it's able to render so quick, because even though you're moving things around, it's updating, but then it's constantly improving the render as you work on something else. So sometimes you get a lot of noise, maybe the quality doesn't come through, but then you just have to wait until it finishes. Well, you don't have to wait. You can just continue making updates and it does this in the background. Now, the best real quality of your render is always going to come through bucket rendering. So again, this is not the final best version. This is just interactive work in progress version. But then when you do a final render, you should really just do bucket rendering, which is just a single frame and just re-render everything. And this will actually go through and whatever settings you have, if you change any settings and increase any quality, through the render settings menu. Then it can actually update and give you the final result. The one you would actually want to save and keep and do something with. So these two icons right here, these are your go-to for rendering. One is your final, the other one is your work in progress interactively, in real time. The next few important icons are ability to save your screenshots. So it's gonna be very important that when you're working, you may want to save a work in progress then you update some lights, maybe change your camera angle, maybe adjust your material, and then you do another render. And you want to compare it before and after. And the way to do that is take a snapshot, a screenshot inside the Redshift render view. To do this, if you come over here in the menu, and sometimes you may not see these icons, you may have a little drop down menu to get access to more, or you might just need to open this up bigger. But right, you will see two icons right here. One will say snapshot, and the other one is take snapshot. So to take a snapshot, just left click, and this will take a current snapshot of your current rendered frame. And it will save it right here on the bottom. Then you can maybe, let's say you update some lights. Let me go ahead and turn on IPR. Maybe you update and you say, okay, well, I wanna compare the before and after. Maybe I rotated the light. I wanna see the before and after. And then you come over here and you can take another one. And then you'll have the first one, and then you have the second one. And you can cycle between each or if you, you can have more, you can just go through and just see the before and after and compare. This is very useful. And uh, let me go ahead and take another one just so I can show you how to delete one. So let's say I position the light here and move it back and I'll take another one. So now I have one, two, and three. If you ever want to delete a snapshot, just simply select it and hit delete and this will remove it. Now, this does not save any screenshots. This just keeps it in memory, but when you shut down Maya and restart it, these will be gone. So just note that. If you happen to want to actually save your screenshot, you could go to File, Save Image As, and just save it as, let's say, a PNG or a JPEG. And that way you have your screenshot rendered and saved. If you don't see this window on the bottom, or maybe you want to just go ahead and hide it, you can go ahead and uh, left click on this icon right here and this will hide the snapshot view or you can bring it back. You will also have access to it right here under view. As well as a few other options. I'm not gonna go through every single one, but let's say you don't see a status bar. You can just enable the status bar. It shows up on the bottom and a few other ones. So if you ever lose some of the menus and they're not there, that's how you bring them back. So a few more things for this very quick overview crash course is ability to render from specific cameras. This becomes very important and very important to know very early on. So rendering from your perspective viewport is not really done. You wanna have a dedicated camera to render from so that way you can navigate around the scene, you can update and then uh, you could work on your scene and then it won't actually update in real time. Basically you can adjust settings, lights, materials, move things around and just see it update from the camera point of view rather than, you, than your perspective. So to do this, you need to create a camera. So if you go to create, cameras, camera, this will create a camera to look from and to render from. Now I'm simply gonna take this camera and I'm gonna scale it so I can see it better and just move it up. And I'm gonna look through the camera in order to just position and get my angle. This is a very common way if uh, you've worked with cameras before, you know you first you need to kind of position your shot. So I'm gonna temporarily jump over to my camera by going to panels, perspective, camera one. 
and just adjust it, position it where I want it, what I want to render. So let's say this is my angle. And I can even uh, enable uh, the resolution gate. So I can see exactly what's outside my frame. And then I'm going to jump back out. So I can work inside my perspective viewport. All right, so in order to start rendering, you can use the drop down menu right here and the camera should show up. If it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't show up. Just do a quick render and then use the drop down menu again and choose the camera that you just inserted. And then once you have it selected, just do a render or do, just do an IPR and it will begin to render from that camera. So now I can move things around and move and navigate inside my perspective viewport while seeing exactly what I'm looking at and what my final shot is. So I can even duplicate objects. Say control D to duplicate, maybe I can size it down. You can see it's updating in real time and I'm seeing exactly from my camera. This is uh, very, very useful. And one more thing before we finish up with this uh, basic overview and we continue to other videos with more focus. I wanna show you how to change your final render size of your frame. So what I'm looking for through here has a specific size. So if I go to file, save image as, and I save it, it'll have specific resolution. Now the way you set your resolution of your screenshot to save is you have to go to the render settings. So go ahead and click on the fourth icon right here. And the way to change that is going to be under common tab, file output. And actually it's gonna be a little further down, it's gonna be under resolution. And you have a preset. And here is where you change the size of your frame that you're gonna render from. And uh, because I already have a camera, I may wanna switch over to camera one in order to render and set my settings for the camera I'm gonna render from. And here I can set maybe, let's say I want uh, HD 720. So this is where you set the width and the height and the resolution of your render shot. Then you can close. And then next time you render, it's gonna render in higher resolution, whatever you set. And you can always check right here on the right hand side on the bottom, it'll show you the resolution of your current frame. And then once you're done, let's say this is your final shot, then you can go ahead and save your image. And it will save it as with that new resolution. All right, and uh, so this is all I wanted to cover for this very first overview crash course video. Enough to kind of give you a insight, get you started to render in some basic scenes, maybe uh, rendering from a camera, and just kind of set us up for all the future videos in the series that I'm going to do to cover how to render using Redshift in Maya. So I'll see you in the next video.